Hey guys, welcome to my final ever Supergirl review. Wow, we are finally here. I can't believe it's happened. But before this video starts, I just want to say a personal thank you to all of you guys who have watched my videos over the years. Supergirl has been a big part of my channel and I wouldn't be who I am today or I wouldn't be making the videos that I make today without you guys because it's all down to you. So thank you for watching and thank you for supporting me over all the years. And this is obviously my final Supergirl review. We'll continue to make Supergirl videos, don't worry. There is still potential for Kara to return, for Melissa to return in the Arrowverse in the future. Maybe some potential spin-offs, lots of stuff coming. Also, we got the Supergirl film, so no worries about Supergirl content. But obviously, this marks the end of an era. No more episodes, no more new episodes. So, speculations from here on out. But yeah, enjoy the video and thank you once again. Hey guys, Ben here and welcome back to another video on Supergirl Season 6. Today is going to be my final ever review for Supergirl as a whole. The series finale just aired episode 19 and 20 combined in one big two hour finale. And man, what a roller coaster it was. I've got a lot of thoughts, I've got a lot of notes, this is going to be a long video because as you know, so much went down and I have a lot of thoughts. I really enjoyed the way they wrapped up the finale. I thought it was a great way to end the series. The ending came as actually quite a big surprise. I did not expect Kara to stick around on Earth and still be Supergirl, to be honest. I thought she was going to go to the future or I thought she was going to go to Argo or basically retire as Supergirl, but instead something completely different happened and we'll talk about that later in the video and Kat Grant returned which was a complete shock I had no idea she was returning in this episode and she had the perfect role and the perfect way to end the series with her conversations with Kara but nevertheless let's go into my notes and go through this chronologically so we're gonna start with episode 19 and then we'll gradually move on to episode 20 so episode 19 begins in the aftermath and we get a recording of Lex, and it's a great monologue from John Cryer. I also have to mention, John Cryer has been great over the past few seasons since he joined in season 4 as Lex Luthor. Obviously, a lot of you guys probably know John from Two and a Half Men and his film work from before. He's a great actor, and he's always been a great actor, and he always will be, and I think he did a great job as Lex. I think he is probably the definitive Lex in my mind in the entirety of DC as a whole, so kudos to him. I think he did a fantastic job, and this episode definitely was very good for him, although I would say his ending wasn't like the perfect ending, but I mean, that's not his fault. That was just the way his ending was written. And we'll get into that later in the episode. But anyway, so this recording at the start of episode 19 basically sets up a big conundrum because where he wants to meet is near where Fort Raz used to be. And basically something happened there so that no superpowers can work in that vicinity. So it's the perfect meeting point for someone like Lex to meet up with all these superpower beings. And then Lex and Nixley fight about what to do with Esme. As Lex reveals that he wants to physically take the totem out of Esme. However, that is a line that Nixie won't cross and she sticks to that throughout the whole episode and it causes the rift that tears the two of them apart despite Lex being so adamantly in love with her. He is willing to risk that in order to gain this ultimate power and we kind of knew this was coming and it ended exactly how we imagined and obviously that created some sort of good tension between the two of them as they fought throughout National City, later in the episode, and also into the next episode, into the actual series finale. So let's move on to the next thing. So Andrea somehow finds the tower, she meets Lena, and she goes through all of her thoughts about how she thinks she's a monster, but Lena thinks that there's still a chance that she can be sort of rectified and saved, as after all, everyone makes mistakes. However, she did cause a big mistake with William's death. Which I think definitely goes a bit brushed over in this episode. Maybe that's one thing that could have had more focus. The funeral scene was pretty small and wasn't too much about William. But then again, in these last two episodes, they were packing in so much that I guess they had to cut a lot of scenes out. And you're probably going to see quite a few deleted scenes when the DVD and Blu-ray eventually releases later this year. 
Okay, so let's move on to the next thing. So Kara and John talk about how they basically let their guard down and how Kara is willing to use the All Stone in order to stop Lex. And obviously this is a line that definitely is going to cause some controversy if she crosses it. And she does, or she nearly does, later in the episode and we'll get to that in just a moment. But Lex's mum, Lillian, shows up and she warns Nixie of Lex just later. However, at the start, it's just the two of them, and obviously, you know, you have that whole dynamic between Lillian and Lex, which is great, and I love seeing it in this episode, and after recently re-watching Two and a Half Men, I realized that he always has a similar relationship with his mum in whatever show, and yeah, I think he really plays that amazingly, John Cryer. So again, props to John, I think he's definitely fantastic and so a big thing obviously that causes the rift between Lex and Nixley is the fact that Nixley isn't able to get through to Esme until later and obviously that is because she shows her love for Esme and her love for people in general but she isn't able to get the petals and extract the love totem out of her and this is obviously the root cause of Lex becoming uneasy and willing to cross that line that eventually scars him and changes his future forever and so in terms of Alex and Kelly obviously this is a big couple of episodes to them especially episode 20 because that is their wedding and it was a beautiful wedding and we'll get to the wedding soon I feel like I want to talk about all of this straight away but I have so much to go through but you guys are gonna have to be patient and watch through most of this video if you want me to get to that because obviously there is two whole episodes to go through and it's a whole lot Okay, so Alex and Kelly, they are scared, but Kelly is the hopeful one. Alex is annoyed by herself, and she's obviously the one on edge, and she does some very dangerous things this episode, all for love, and obviously it's all with good intentions. However, she does very much so sort of tease her on the line of being very dangerous, and her actions can definitely have repercussions. And so Supergirl gets the last totem in Prague, and somehow Alex teleports there and she basically steals it and then team supergirl is told by supergirl that alex turned up took the totem and now alex and kelly are going to negotiate with lex and nixley at the bridge in order to get esme back so it's at this point that supergirl realizes or in fact she's actually told that she has the ability if she absorbs some of the sun's radiation via a certain government satellite i'm not entirely sure about the exact details but it's something along along those lines that she would basically become invincible and everything all her powers would be amped up by over 50% however it will come at a big cost as I believe the sun would be destabilized and basically broken and in need of repair for over six months and this is a risk that she's willing to take in order to stop Lex and Nixie from becoming all powerful and obviously this is like a huge decision but she takes it pretty lightly and she goes ahead with it pretty swiftly despite the warnings from Lena about playing God. And so in terms of Lex and Nixie's story everything goes downhill from here as Mitch betrays them and basically reveals that Lex is planning to go inside Esme and cut out the totem rather than just waiting for it to come out naturally. And so obviously it's at that point where Nixie gets the totem because of her love and her defending Esme. Even though she's not her own child, it's just something that she won't cross. And so it's at this point that we go forward to the bridge scene. And at the same time the Earth goes into a sort of eclipse because of Supergirl who goes up in the air and she absorbs all this energy. You can see her becoming so extremely powerful. It's shown in some CGI shots of basically her hearing and her looking at all these other people and hearing exactly what they're thinking, hearing the heartbeats and everything. And she realizes that her choice was wrong and she tells Brainy to shut it down and they do. So they're back on the good side of the law. And obviously Supergirl has made the right decision. And although I don't think like the scene was the absolute best because I thought some of the intercutting was a bit like an obvious ploy to kind of be like, yeah, Supergirl, don't do it, because look at all these innocent people. But I get it, and I get that they all only use like three main people, 
to be your main guys because they obviously don't want to pay everyone so that's why you have like a bunch of extras and a couple of main guys and main focus but yeah the overall message of the scene came across pretty well and so team supergirl then goes off to fight lex and lillian who shows up but they're also fighting against nixley so it's like a free-for-all and obviously there is a couple of sides and people are taking sides but lex actually nearly gets killed by Nixley, only to be saved by Lillian. And obviously Lillian here was sort of a savior for her son and she would do anything for her son, but it's also revealed that she has something that she wants to get off her chest later before she actually dies and she does actually end up dying, which is kind of crazy because obviously that's a big step. It's the ultimate end. But basically she gets closure with Lena and Lena gets closure and she's able to properly tap into her powers. And it's at this point that Lex and Nixie literally turn into monsters and they start fighting each other and the world goes crazy. And Brainy thinks that they should send in reinforcements and obviously reinforcements come in pretty fast. But that's in the next episode, in episode 20 and we're about to just move on to that. So let's move on. So now the series finale episode 20 obviously this is the second part of the two-part finale so hopefully you guys are still stuck around apologies that it's taken a while again lots of stuff happened in the previous episode and also in this episode i mean i think there's even more to talk about here but obviously we're going to talk about it in some extra videos post this review especially to do with the ending because it leaves a lot of open options about the future of Supergirl and the team but let's go ahead and get into it so yeah the finale so it begins with Lillian with Lena and they have that conversation that I just mentioned which is obviously a big character moment and a big step forward for Lena and the life that she's going to lead after the finale and obviously there is a couple of teasers about like what she's potentially doing in the future and if she ever returns she will still be in national city she's not going anywhere but she will maybe be taking up more of a magical role because now she is fully embraced with her magic powers and she's not like afraid to use them anymore basically and so then we move on and supergirl realizes that she is been going about hearing all wrong now this is going to be a bit controversial because this is not exactly how everyone sees superheroing but in terms of the show they reveal that supergirl must empower people and they must empower the citizens of national city and of the world to create a better world to claim their power and so that's lots to think about and i think Overall, by the end of the episode, they get the message across in a really good way, especially when they introduce Kat and they introduce the idea of Kara as Supergirl and as her embracing who she is and it kind of parallels everyone else embracing who they are and I don't know how to properly explain it, but if you watch the whole episode, I think at first it comes across as maybe a little bit rushed about this big kind of revelation that they must empower everyone rather than be superheroes and save everyone like at first I get it that maybe it seems a bit weird but I do think that the whole message comes across better by the end of the episode because they kind of touch upon it bit by bit and so yeah that's my kind of thoughts on that I don't know about you guys let me know in the comments down below what do you think about that okay so let's talk about Lex now he brings a whole army with him obviously nixie is here during the scene she brings back two of her fifth dimensional creatures i don't know what they specifically are it's like a dragon and some sort of dream monster but lex brings back a whole load of characters from the past now i thought they would play a bigger role in this episode like specifically overgirl there's quite a lot shot with her i don't know if a lot of it went in the cutting room floor but Overgirl shows up, we have Red Tornado, Parasite, and Metallo. Those are the people that Lex brings back as part of his army. And throughout this fight scene, this final big battle, they basically are taken down and are vaporized. So Supergirl goes into Catco and she's fighting Overgirl. And as Overgirl uses her heat vision, Monel shows up out of nowhere and saves Supergirl. Obviously, this was revealed in the trailer, but it was a great moment to see him finally back. Monel back in the flesh, reunited with Kara. Obviously, Kara is shocked in this moment. Obviously, she's in the middle of a battle, and it cuts away to Win, who is in the Legion ship. He's shown up, and Jimmy also returns. 
as he fights alongside his sister, both suited up in the Guardian suits. It was great to see them all back, obviously they are the reinforcements that was teased in the previous episode like I mentioned earlier by Brainy. And so yeah, great to see them back, original team Supergirl members, obviously James and Wynn and Monel. It's been a big part of the show since season 2 when he showed up in episode 1 and obviously he was the cliffhanger to season 1 and it's great to see him finally back obviously he was in the 100th episode last year but now he's officially back in the real world and in the present day rather than like in an alternate reality like in the 100th episode okay so let's talk about this final battle scene so overall i think it was a bit anticlimactic because there's no real big battle in the end and I think the idea of the way that Lex and Nixley are taken down is a bit funny. I don't think it's very complete. I feel like that was probably the weakest part of the finale. Just the way that the Phantoms come through and because of Lex and Nixley's hubris, which I get. But just the way that, you know, he sends them out. They go around, they fly around, they go up in the air and they stay there. And then they just like you turn back and go after Lex and Nixie and yeet them up into the air and we see nothing else of them ever again. Like, no proper reactions even. Maybe they could have had a shot as they are dragged into the portal. Their reactions like Lex being like, I will get you again, Supergirl. Mark my words or something like that. Something Lex, you know, something villainous. But literally they're just taken up into the Phantom Zone and I presume They'll be locked there forever, but there's always a chance that Lex will show up on Superman and Lois, so we'll just have to wait and see. And another problem I had with the episode was the way that they use Monel because he literally shows up, he says a few lines, and he has one very good scene after the funeral where Monel is talking to Kara, and we're gonna get to that in a minute. But apart from that, Monel's return is very, very brief, and he doesn't barely get any time because he doesn't even come to the wedding and there is no proper closure with Team Supergo, he doesn't even properly say bye, he just like salutes them and walks off after the funeral and that's pretty much it. And there is no goodbye to the fans as well, so yeah, I don't know if I like that ending for Monel, I definitely think it could have had a few more scenes and maybe a bit more going on there, but maybe there were some edited out scenes, hopefully, maybe that's in the deleted scenes like I mentioned earlier. Okay, let's move on to the next bit. So, William's funeral. This is what happens next. So, everyone's sad. There's some music and a couple of people say some words. Andrea says some words about his legacy and the fact that she's setting up a foundation for him or like an award actually is. And you get like a quick montage of what's going to be happening in the future in National City. There is a Dreamer LGBTQ foundation that has formed this William Award, a Lena Luther Foundation, and I believe the last one, and again these cut through pretty quick and this is just what I was able to get down in my notes, but a new DEO is opened, obviously with Jean operating it, and also I believe Alex is going to be working alongside him at the DEO once again and it's back and this was proposed by the government and Kara and Sean are all for it and I think it was a great way to end John's story by putting him back in the role that he was supposed to be in because I do think it was always weird that they got rid of the DEO stuff and just made like a Team Supergirl base but I think the DEO really worked over the last you know however many years Supergirl was running for like six years and I felt like this year we were definitely missing out on the DEO because we were just kind of in this one place in the tower all the time but the DEO was like this big expansive place where they had a lot to explore and so I'm very happy that they ended with the reopening of the new DEO and so talking about Caramel, talking about Cara and Monel and that final scene they have a great final scene together and Monel reveals he must return to the future he can't even stay for the wedding obviously there is a lot to do and a lot to protect obviously as the leading member of the Legion of Superheroes in the future and considering that the future has changed is needed back home and so they say their last final goodbyes and he reveals that he may not even ever return to this timeline to this exact time once again obviously that pretty much closes the door on a potential more now return any time in the future so yeah it seems like he's gone and uh but moving on to the next thing we have brainy who also reveals he's leaving but that is quickly retconned at the end of the episode because he loves 
Nia so much that he doesn't want to do that. And obviously I think that is the right way for them to end. And there is a couple of points just after this where Supergirl, well Kara realizes that she isn't needed much as Supergirl. And this is the big realization that leads towards the finale and how the series ends. And out of nowhere, Callista Flockhart returns as Cat Grant and plays a huge part in the finale and the way that Supergirl is ending. What a wonderful and great surprise. I love Kat, she's so missed. And even just these couple of scenes that she has just proves what we've been missing over the past few years. What a treasure she is. And so she reveals that she's bought back Catco because Andrea sold it once again, and she's making Kara the editor in chief. Now that is a big revelation about the future of what Kara is going to be doing. She's going to be the new editor-in-chief, she's going to be running Catco. I think it's the perfect ending and I think it's absolutely brilliant that they involved Cat and they got Callista back for the finale and it's just perfect in my opinion. Okay, so Kara and Alex talk and she suggests that Kara could help out on another world. Obviously this is a teaser, however this didn't come to fruition because Kara comes to her own realisation that she needs to be true to herself and reveal her identity as Supergirl and obviously this is the big way that she reveals her identity by the end of the episode and obviously this happens with the help of Kat who calls once again later revealing that secrecy is the badge of fraud that is a quote that she mentions and the fact that Supergirl pretty much isn't needed anymore and that Kat knew that Kara was Supergirl always and we kind of knew that but Kara didn't realize that so obviously it comes as a shock but what great lovely scenes as it helps to show Kara realizing what her future course will be to become her full true self which leads to the big reveal and I'm gonna skip right to the ending right now and we have the big Catco announcement after the final super friend scene and there is all over the TVs Kara sits down with Cat Grant for an interview and Kara is revealed as Supergirl to the entire world. Wow. Now that was a great ending. I really love this ending. I think it's perfect for the character, which is obviously just my opinion, but it's great to see that she's actually going nowhere. She's sticking where her home is and I think that really does hit home. Again, no pun intended, but it's true. And I really like that she didn't go to the future as some of us predicted and didn't go to Argo, but instead she is the editor-in-chief of Catco, she is doing her dream job, but whilst also still being Supergirl, and like I said before, I loved that Cat was the one to lead Kara down this next avenue that she's going down, this next path, as Kara and Supergirl combined, so she's going absolutely nowhere. Now let's jump back to the wedding. So the wedding was beautiful, I thought it was great. Maybe my favorite scene of the entire season is the scene where Kara and Wynn are singing over the wedding as Kelly comes in, Alex is waiting, Jean's waiting, and we get all the reactions, but also the singing was just so good. It was a beautiful scene, it was beautifully sung, and it was just great to see the two of them singing. I thought it was extremely poetic. And obviously I'm biased because I love those two singing. I think they're fantastic, both Melissa and Jeremy. So yeah, the wedding was just such a joy. And obviously James has this great speech with Kelly just before the wedding. It's a very tender moment. They have their own signal watch that he gives them just like Superman gave James originally. I thought that was very fitting. Kara and Eliza talking to Alex and obviously Esme's there as well. They get their sort of moment and also that's when you see Brainy returning and additionally you have John who delivers a beautiful speech just before Alex and Kelly's vows to each other as they get ready to consummate their marriage. And so after the wedding we get quite a surprise and that surprise is in fact that John and McGann have a son in the future. And that son in the future is a member of the Legion of Superheroes. So again, with these references and with mono going home, I feel like there is a potential for a Legion of Superheroes spin-off. I will make a video on this sometime in the next week, theorizing about this post-Supergirl ending, because there's definite teasers for more of this, and 
they definitely could include Neo and Brainy if they ever wanted to move to the future as well. So yeah, lots of teasers here, but Jean and Megan having a son? What? And it's also weird that they didn't bring back Megan, maybe they just couldn't get Sharon Lil back, but she was like a decent part of the star this season where she kind of appeared out of nowhere. But yeah, it was a great way to kind of end Jean's story, also getting him back to the DEO perfectly sort of bookmarked everything. Also at this point, Wynn teases that Jean's future DEO will be good because that's what he knows from the future. And then we have a great dance scene just shortly afterwards to We Are Family and this was just great fun and there's a couple of other dance scenes throughout the wedding and then the original team Supergirl talk and that is obviously just James, Kara and also Wynn and they talk about how it all started in that room in Catco with just the three of them and then remember when Barry just ran in and showed up and he was pretty much like the first fourth member and now look at team Supergirl now they have like a huge expansive team with a whole base but it all started in Catco in like an abandoned layer and I think it's a great callback and I love that scene. So yeah, let's move on from this. We have Kara and Lena and Kara reveals that she's lost, she thinks that she's weak and she's done hiding who she is and they have a hug, they say their farewells pretty much and it's at this point that she takes off the glasses. Now obviously the glasses are a big symbol for what was holding her back it was a way of her hiding her identity, but now she's done with that, she's ready for her next adventure, and she can't wait for what is next, obviously, with becoming the editor-in-chief of Catco. And also Supergirl, but also Kara at the same time. So that about does it for this video, guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. That does it for my final ever Supergirl review. There will be more Supergirl videos, as I promised at the start of the video. But thank you guys so much for watching over the years, obviously it's been 6 years, we've been making Supergirl videos since the start of season 2, so pretty much 5 years for my channel, and yeah, if you've been around since then, thank you for sticking around, stick around for more content, obviously The Flash is coming back next week, we're going to be covering Superman Lois, which is a Supergirl spin-off after all, also there's going to be lots more Supergirl content in the future in the DCEU, but also there's potential for Melissa to return. Kyla Lee is returning as Alex Danvers in the upcoming Flash Armageddon crossover. So again, Supergirl content isn't going anywhere, but this is my last review of Supergirl considering that there's gonna be no more episodes, at least for a long, long time. So for now, thank you guys so much for watching. Please be sure to leave a like and a comment, subscribe and turn on notifications to not miss any future videos. And also you can click on the top right corner of the screen to watch my latest video. But for now, thank you guys so much for watching. And I'll catch you guys later. Goodbye. And once again, thank you so much for being awesome and supporting Supergirl content over these last five years of Supergirl and crossover content relating to Supergirl. So I'll catch you guys later. Goodbye. I see red.